In this episode, you'll learn an easy exercise to reduce your pre-launch stress and increase your confidence. Welcome to Flight Coach. If you're new here, my name is Bas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get more out of life and your flying career to having less stress and more skills. In this episode, you're gonna learn how to use LSD. No, 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 no. Don't put that stuff in your mouth. I'm talking about something else. LSD stands for Launch Stress Destructor. Now this is a really easy and fun exercise. It's an exercise that anybody can do and I'm sure you can do it too. The pre-launch stress that so many of us experience actually has become a self-sustaining habit. It is something that your subconscious actually does to you. The great thing about this technique is that it works no matter the severity of the stress you're experiencing, either be it a heightened anxiety or a completely debilitating fear that prevents you from launching altogether. By the way, I made a complete series about dealing with fear of flying. If you are interested in that topic, I will leave a link to the playlist right here. First, I will walk you through the steps you have to take in order to execute this exercise properly. Now, this is a technique that can be used either by instructors on helping their students or by free flying pilots that are not flying under supervision anymore. So there is a specific part of this episode, a little chapter devoted to tips specifically for instructors and another chapter specifically for free flying pilots using this technique on themselves. So without further ado, let's get into the steps you need to take to properly execute this exercise. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to a lounge on a day that it is flyable, preferably a day when other people are also flying and launching from that site. And when you arrive at the takeoff location, you're gonna look for a nice quiet spot from where it is possible to take off, but where you're not bothering anyone else. And in that spot, you're gonna make ready to fly. You're gonna unpack all your gear, you're gonna do the checks as you've learned them, and you're gonna make yourself completely ready to fly. All buckled up, your helmet on, everything ready, as if the only last thing you had to do is actually take off. And then, you're just gonna stand there. You're gonna stand there, ready for takeoff, and you're not gonna do anything. You're just going to observe. Be present in the moment. Look around, look at the other pilots, look at the beautiful nature surrounding you, look at the slope in front of your feet, look in the distance, hear the sounds of the air blowing past your helmet, try to smell what it is there, maybe fresh mown grass, Maybe you can smell flowers, but just observe nature. Feel what the wind, if it's present, is doing to your skin on your face. Maybe you can feel temperature differences when the thermals pass you by. But the objective of this exercise is to be present in the moment. You're not going to do anything. And once the exercise is finished, it is completely okay to pack up all your stuff again and to leave the takeoff without ever flying. Flying is not a goal of this exercise. And be sure to fight the urge to go. If you're doing this exercise for the first time, what will quite often happen is that you're feeling, yeah, I've been standing here for an eternity now, uh, I just have to go. And that's another way of dealing with stress, but it's going through. It's, it's going through the stress, it's not really experiencing what is there to be experienced for you. And make sure that you stand there for at least, at a bare minimum, 10 minutes. You can set your alarm if you like, but 10 minutes will definitely seem like an eternity. And that is exactly what you're trying to do. Not being focused on achieving a certain goal, like launching, but just being present. Try to shut off that brain. Try to stop thinking. And you do that by focusing on the experiences. And what you will start to feel during this exercise is that the tension in your body, the stress and all the thoughts in your brain, they will slowly start to subside. You will feel that your breathing, which will probably be elevated as we call it, you'll probably be breathing high, you will start to breathe lower towards your tummy area. And your breathing will also become less shallow, less rapid. And the end result of this exercise can be one of two things, or, you notice that your stress, your tension is decreasing and you're very happy with that. Good job, well done. You could just pack up, be proud of yourself 
and try again another day. Or an end result may be, but this is not the goal, an end result can also be that you have lowered your stress to such a degree that you feel comfortable launching. And then just go right ahead. You're there now anyway. Walk into the air and have a magnificent flight. And after you've done this exercise, be sure to repeat it. Do it again another day and another day. And just keep repeating this exercise. Remember, the goal is not to launch. The goal is to be present in the moment. And what you will notice is if you keep doing this exercise regularly, your stress will subside and it will subside faster. The first time it may take you 10, 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour before you notice that your stress starts dropping. But if you do it a second time, a third time, a fourth time, you will notice that the decline in stress is a lot faster, is a lot steeper. And that's what you want. How does this exercise actually work? What is the, the basis behind it? The pre-launch stress that so many of us experience, it has been developed by past stressful experiences and thoughts about those experiences. And it has become a habit, a habit that keeps repeating itself. Every time that you arrive at a launch, your body will start responding. Even before you're consciously thinking certain thoughts, your body already knows Oh my God, I'm in the situation that we're going to launch again. I may hurt myself. I may crash. I may die. And you don't want that. And it may sound strange if I'm telling it to you like this, but if you're walking around in the supermarket, you're doing your grocery shopping, or you're walking across the street, or you're sitting in a restaurant eating with your friends, why does your body not respond to that in the same way? because the situation is really different. The pre-launch stress attaches itself to the very specific situation. The situation of you standing on that hill, on that mountain, or on that dune, or ready for takeoff at the winch, wherever you fly, but your subconscious recognizes the situation and this triggers the response. And what we're doing in this exercise is bringing you into this situation intentionally triggering this response and just letting the response play out. Just see what happens. So the basic response that most people have to this fear of launching, this pre-launch stress, is either one of two things. First possibility is that they flee. They find some sort of silly excuse, they pack up their stuff and they leave. By the way, I made an entire episode about all the excuses that people use when they experience a fear of flying. I will link it up here. And the second response that we see a lot is the fight response. And it is the response that people push themselves by sheer willpower to take off. And what happens in those conditions is that people are not present. And the way you can recognize that in yourself or maybe in others is if you try to find out what happened during your launch when you're pushing through this stress, is that you can't recall it at all. You cannot recall how it felt. You cannot recall how it went. There's just this moment in time you decided to take off. And then a few seconds later, there's this moment when you're suddenly in the air and everything that's in between, nobody knows where it went. So in this exercise, we intentionally invoke this stress response and then we just let it be. We ride it out. This will decrease the intensity. It will decrease the intensity in this specific moment, but it will also increase the intensity in the future. So if you keep repeating this exercise, you will notice that the intensity will keep decreasing. Use LSD, the launch stress destructor, to reduce your launch stress. But remember, it takes time. It takes perseverance. This is not a quick fix. For as far as I know, there is no quick fix to these kinds of stress responses. So let's now talk about a few tips for instructors. To start off with one of the most obvious ones, this is an extremely effective exercise, but it's also a very time consuming one. So choose wisely when to use it. There may be situations in which a different approach may uh, achieve proper results as well, but cost you less time. And specifically addressing school owners or when it comes to larger schools, the chief flight instructors of those schools, please don't let just any instructor do this exercise with one of your students. 
The intent needs to be pure. This exercise needs to be executed properly or else the results will be very poor or can even be adverse. Don't let just any random junior instructor do this with a student that has a fear of flying because he will regret that. So when you're standing on the takeoff with your student and you're doing this exercise, there are a few things that you need to arrange for maximum effectiveness of this exercise. And one of those things is that you need to make sure that you're in your bubble, that you're not being disturbed by other students. So maybe if you're there with a group, help them take off first. So then you have the time to do this exercise with the remaining students. Inform your student in advance that this is a no talking exercise. To some people, this might be weird, because most instructors have the tendency to yap on a little bit. Even those that have been specifically trained in didactics not to do that, most of us talk a lot. This is a no talking exercise. So just be quiet. Inform the student ahead of time that you're gonna do that or else it may feel a bit weird. So those first 10 minutes are the most difficult part of this exercise because a lot of thoughts are still going on inside the brain of the student and there will probably come a point that the student will try to please you um, and show you that he or she has conquered their fear and is going to take off. You don't want that. You don't want them pushing through the fear. You want them facing it and experiencing it so they can learn to deal with the stress so that it can subside. So what you want to do for the first 10 minutes Casually, but intentionally, block the takeoff path of your student. What I always do is I just go sit straight in front of the student in like half a meter distance. I go sit in front of the feet of the student on my ass and I'm just looking into the wide open in the direction of takeoff. I'm just gonna sit there and I'm gonna enjoy myself. And fight the urge to look at your student. Don't make eye contact. Hey, how's it going? Still everything okay? Don't do that. Just make sure you don't get the student out of their bubble. Don't forget to like and subscribe! Now I only use this exercise on students, on pilots that have flown before, that have launched before and that know what it is to fly, what they can expect, but that just have built up this habit of creating stress for themselves before launching. I recommend against using this technique for first timers, for students that have never flown before. For two main reasons. Reason one, it is my personal conviction that we as instructors should never try to use techniques or ways to push a first timer into making their first launch. That is just looking for trouble. Reason two, if you were to use this technique on a first timer, I think it will not be very effective. The first timer has no idea on what to expect in the air. The first timer is in a completely different mindset than the pilot that this exercise is intended for. A few logical small things. Be sure to turn your radio off. The chatter will be uh, distracting for the student. Also make sure that you and the student are not bothered by, by others others from your group. Uh, I think they should have taken off before you do this exercise so you don't have any students left at the takeoff in that point in time. But if there are other schools or other pilots flying there, they may get interested or curious why the hell you're standing there with the student for minutes on end not doing anything. Might be a good idea to approach your fellow instructor if there's another school over there, just telling them what's going on so they leave you alone and not bother you. Make sure that you're not blocking anyone else's launch path. The way this exercise is most effective is if you're standing somewhere where the student is able to take off, should he or she decide to do so. But so that means that you're taking up piece of the hill, piece of the launch that is suitable for taking off. It's a, if it's a very small launch and if it's busy, it may not be a good moment to do that exercise because you're actually blocking the launch capacity over there. After doing this exercise, be sure to evaluate with your student. Ask them the questions like, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you smell? What did you feel? That helps the student to recall those things and to really stay in the moment. And it's especially effective if you do the exercise again on another day. And then ask what the 
uh, sensations were. How was the breathing progressing? What was the stress doing? How did the student feel its body react to this exercise? At the end of the day, when you do your day debrief with the instruction team, it is very important to specifically mention that you did this exercise with this certain student. It can have a profound impact, especially overnight, what the student will come back to. And it may share the experiences or the thoughts about this exercise with one of your teammates. And if he or she, the day after, has no idea that you did this, it will look very unprofessional and you will miss a great chance to give follow up on that. So a few tips for pilots. For those of you that have been watching along in the instructor chapter, you'll see a few things coming. So make a little virtual bubble for yourself. If you're flying over there with other people, with your buddies, inform them that you're gonna take a lot of time for yourself and you do not wanna have any contact with them in this period of time. You don't wanna be answering radio calls, doing checks for certain people, answering questions on how many beers you're going to drink this evening. Make sure that you don't block others. So pick a spot in which it is perfectly possible for you to take off, should you decide to do that, but it is also okay to just stand there for half an hour without bothering anyone else. Make sure to take notes after you've done this exercise, preferably right after you've done the exercise. So make some notes on how this exercise went for you. What were the things you focused on? What did you see? What did you feel? What did you smell? What did you hear? And writing this down helps you in repeating this exercise because it is an exercise that should be repeated maybe a dozen times to have the desired effect. If you take these notes and you do that every time, you can keep alternating your focus. So if you find in your notebook that you're actually only focusing on what you're seeing, next time focus on what you're hearing or what you're smelling. And the last tip I can give you is work on your takeoff mindset. And did you know that I created a video specifically about that? So, LSD, the Launch Stress Destructor. You now know what it is and how to apply it. Sounds simple? Because it is. Do you know what's also simple? Liking this video, subscribing, and pressing that bell icon so you get notified when I release my next video, which I do weekly, every Friday. So I hope you decide to stick around for a bit. The top video here is one that YouTube recommends you watch. And there's another down there that I recommend you watch. See you next time, see you in the air.